Hey, welcome to Integrative Preparedness. I'm Steve Smith. Let me make sure I got everything plugged in here right and everything. We just got done eating dinner. And, uh, uh, oh, it was good off the grill. I wanted to, thought I'd sit down and talking about uh, all the people who seem to want to fight. Let's talk about that for a few minutes. If you got one, join me in a buffalo sweat or whatever else you've got. Um, I didn't bring my books out here, but uh, this is brought to you by my books, the Stonemont series. And if you'd like to, to read them, the way to order them is down below in the information section or a pinned comment. Or if you'd like to join me on Patreon, because uh, we put special stuff over there. The link uh, <clears throat> is down there on that, too. I want to talk tonight and ask the question. I don't know what I'll call this. Want to fight, I guess? Did I already say that? It kind of popped into my mind. <clears throat> had a uh, had a comment come up on one of my most recent videos, and I, I don't even remember which one it was. I, I, it wasn't until like a day or two. I've been trying to catch up on on comments and things because I've been busy. Uh, I don't need these anymore. Um, so I, I don't remember which one it was to, and I don't remember, I don't know who it was, so nothing personal against whoever said it. Um, that's not what it's about. <clears throat> but the, the statement was something like, I wish that uh, there were... I don't remember the first part. The, the second part, I wish there were, were war, more warriors standing up and talking about fighting. To which I responded, and I'm going to tell a personal story here that just perfectly illustrates my point. And I think some of you will enjoy it. Uh, some of you may get ticked off at it. That's okay. Um, and I responded to him. I said, well, you know, uh, warriors don't usually talk about it. And usually if somebody's talking about it, you don't have to worry much about them. Well, he came back and said something like, well, 500 Spartans stood up and, you know, and history remembers them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, first off, it wasn't, I don't know what you're talking about, 500 Spartans. If you got your information from the movie, you know, about 300 Spartans and the, the, the Battle of Thermo Thermopylae uh, under Leonidas, which, to be honest, I happen to know something about. I'm not bragging. I just happen to know something about that. Uh, from studying about it long ago and actually knowing some people from over there who had had studied it themselves um, <clears throat> and and regardless of what the books tell you uh, it wasn't 300 uh, that defended the pass at Thermopylae uh, it was first off the 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 Greek forces were more like 7,000 um, or was it more I forget it's been a long time since I read and uh and finally towards the end when they were just defending the pass it was it was like 300 spartans and then i mean several hundred others i forget what what city state they were from but anyway it wasn't that and the, the point is and then i answered him i said well that was a long time ago and much before the electronic age so this is this is the point that i want to make you know whoever wants to fight um it's their business, you know, and I'm, I'm not here to judge anything that anybody else does. There are some who want to judge what other people do. I don't I don't care. Do what's right for you. I want to tell a story. <clears throat> and uh, some of this I won't be able to go into detail about much, but but I'll probably be able to do enough to to make the point. Some years ago, I was sitting in a bar, a pub called Peter O'Donnell's in Derry. Uh, which most of you may have heard referred to as Londonderry, in the north of Ireland, which most of you have probably heard of referred to as Northern Ireland. Okay, and this the the real name of the city is Derry, and I won't go into explain why I don't refer to it as Northern Ireland, but those who have a deeper understanding would just say it, the north of Ireland. Uh, under the British occupation of the last 800 years, they changed it and they added London to the front of Derry, and so the world has called it London Derry ever since. But to us, it's, it's Derry, Ireland. 
So I'm sitting in Peter O'Donnell's, and you know what? It's a great bar. I will, um, I will add over on the Patreon site uh, a clip of a group of American students. I forget where they're from. It's one of my favorite renditions of the, the Parting Glass. Um, who happen to be over there, and they're singing a beautiful rendition of this song in Pedro O'Donnell. So you can see the pub where I was when this happened, if you're a Patreon member. Uh, and so you can imagine this going on while I'm sitting there. <clears throat> and I'm not going to go into why I was there, or for the most part, who I was with. I'll talk about one person I was with, and maybe a couple of others. We'll see. So I'm sitting there, I'm talking to some guys. And uh, this one guy I'm talking to, uh, I'm getting kind of bored. I, it, those guys, I mean, they'll end up in a pub at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We'll still be there at midnight. And they keep drinking. And I'm not a drinker like that, even though I might have a can of, or two, a drink or two of Buffalo Sweat in the evening. But they were. I mean, they, they were hard at it. After I'd had a few pints of Murphy's, which I don't drink Guinness, and there's several reasons for that. Uh, some of you might know. <clears throat> Political reasons. Um, after a few Murphy's, uh, I, I've about had enough. And I just sit in there and I'll talk and get, you know, get bored. So I'm talking to this one guy, <clears throat> and I'll tell you his name. His name was Eamon Moore. And uh, a couple of his brothers were there. I won't name them. Um, so I find I'm bored enough, and, and I said, I'm going to call I'm gonna call Kelly. Kelly and I, we were just waiting on uh, the birth of our first son, and I wanted to check on her. She was back in the States. She didn't make the trip with me. And so uh, so I'm talking to her on the phone. And Eamon comes back over. He says, who, who, who are you talking to? I says, I'm talking to Kelly, my wife. Oh, oh, let me talk to her. Let me talk to her. I'm going to try to do the accent, you know, because it's just, just funnier when you do it. Uh, don't worry, a very serious lesson is coming up, guys, and it's something that I hope, and I don't mean to offend anybody, but, I'm, I'm, you know, when we get on here and we do uh, videos, hopefully people come on and they talk about things they know about, maybe that other people don't know about. And so that's my purpose for doing this. It's not to offend anybody. It's not to call anybody out. It's not to, it's to help, okay? I happen to have experience in this area, and I want to throw it out there, and, and I hope it helps. Um, so, oh, let me talk to her. Let me talk to her. I says, okay, all right. So, here it is. So, he gets on the phone. He says, oh, Kelly, last. Oh, me love, how, how's the wee one? When's the wee one coming? You know, they make little, he says, I'm going to make your man famous. I'm going to make him famous. And she's probably going, oh, yeah, we are. Who are you? Ah, oh, it's Eamon. It's Eamon. Um, no, he says, I'm, I, I want your man to... Uh, to write me story. I want your man to write my story. Uh, he says, uh, other people have wanted to write it. And uh, that's true. Uh, other people have wanted to write my story. Uh, but uh, but no, no, I, I don't think they do a good job at all. And and I want to, I want your man to do it. I want your man to do it. And uh, and he'll write my story straight. He'll write it right. And, uh, and I'll make him famous. So he ended up talking to Kelly for, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes, you know, because he was, he was a great talker. Finally, he gives it back. He says, oh, okay, here you go, here you go. <clears throat> so I, 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 I get back on. She says, who was that? And I says, well, I'll tell you when I get back. I don't want to tell you. And this was back before smartphones. I had a little flip phone then. This was, oh, gosh, 2006, five something like that. And... Uh, I'll tell you when I get back, I said. I don't want to talk about it, you know, in an international call. So, uh, so I says, okay. When I get back, and whether I forget if she asked me who that was, by the way, or I said, oh, by the way, that guy that you were talking to on the phone, I says, that was, the guy's name was Eamon Moore. Uh, he killed a bunch of British soldiers. And, um, and she goes, you know, I mean, most people who live in Kansas or pretty much anybody else in the, in the United States, you know, they don't know people who have killed a bunch of British soldiers. Uh, and and I, I interject this here, too. Maybe I should have said this before. There's not many of you out there who have been freedom fighters. 
I know that there's a lot of people out there who talk as if they are or would like to be. But this is serious business. This is more serious than people think. And, 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 and so this is why I'm passing it on. I probably should have said that before. But anyway, so she's like, what? You know, I says, yeah, uh, Eamon was, uh, he did a, a stretch in the cache, which is long cache. It's the prison over there. And uh, the British called it maze and the Irish called it the cache, the long cache. And I says, yeah, he was, uh, he was in the INLA, which is the Irish National Liberation Army, which was kind of an offshoot. They had separated from another group. Uh, because they felt that the IRA was too peaceful. They didn't agree with the ceasefire. They wanted to continue the war, uh, all that. And so they continued a military operation against the occupying British forces. Now, uh, during the time of the Troubles in the north of Ireland, uh, many people were killed. Many people were killed by the security forces. Many people were killed by the, uh, the paramilitaries on both the Republican and the Loyalist side. The only, the only ones most of you ever heard about was the IRA because nobody ever talked about the UDA. Uh, <clears throat> they didn't talk about the Protestant groups. The IRA was the, 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 the Republican, Irish Republican Army. Uh, they were the Catholics, and they were the ones being oppressed in Ireland. And so, because the winner always writes the news, the government always writes the news. Uh, how many of you know that? Uh, and the winner always writes history. You've been made to think that uh, the Brits were good and the I Irish, the Irish Republican movement was bad. And I would simply suggest that you do a little more research on that if you want to know the truth. So, Eamon and his compatriots, uh, there was a bar called a Droppin' Well. Forget the name of the town it was in. And a bunch of British soldiers went there and, uh, you know, to dance with the locals and drink and everything like that. And uh, regardless of what you may have heard, the, the paramilitaries, for the most part, uh, and, and on the Republican side, I can I can pretty much vouch for this. They only struck at military or security forces, meaning military or police, the RUC, which later became the PSNI, uh, or economic targets, which means banks and stuff like that. Uh, they they, did, they didn't uh, they didn't go after civilians. Okay, now there were there were non-combatants killed. Uh, on both sides and by both sides and I know I don't know whether the loyalist uh, groups have uh, apologized for that um, they probably have because things have changed but but the Irish Republicans definitely did they expressed their their regrets and you know I mean that doesn't bring anybody back so I'm not saying well it's okay but these things happen you know don't don't tell me that they haven't happened in the wars that we've done around the world that that people fly flags for. Um, but anyway, so they they were warned they warned the the owner of this bar a number of times. Hey, stop stop serving the the British soldiers, and uh, then uh, they warned him. I don't know how many times, but quite a few times. Uh, stop stop serving, uh, or there's going to be very serious consequences. And, uh, you know, pretty much everybody knew what those consequences were going to be, and they kept serving them. And, and uh, they, they pretty much identified, the INLA, that the, that the people that went there were either um, British security services, meaning army or police, and collaborators. Collaborators meaning uh, people who collaborated with those and supported the security forces that were oppressing the population, which made them fair targets. Okay. Well, anyway, so they they bombed it. They bombed it, and I don't remember how many people were killed. The the majority were were uh, British Army. Uh, there were some civilians killed. Uh, and they it was because you know they were in collaboration with the with the oppressive 
occupying forces, and that's the way it was looked at by the Irish Republican movement. Now, before I go any farther, in case you think that I am, and I'm still not going to go into why I was there and why I know these people or anything, uh, before anybody you know, has any questions about how I feel, while I supported the fight against uh, the occupation and the oppression of the Irish people by the British government, uh, I, I did not support and, and eventually I didn't split. I mean, I parted ways on friendly terms. I, I still know them. I did not support their socialist leanings and even stood up in, in a major meeting and, and stated that and everybody understood and, and, and that's fine. Um, so when I told Kelly, well, this is uh, Eamon Moore, the uh, the guy that uh, bombed and killed a whole bunch of British soldiers, and he sounded so nice on the phone, she said, well, he's such a nice guy. Well, he's at war. You know, he's at war. Well, she was, she was very stunned and very shocked. The reason that I mention his name is, I mean, you can find him in Wikipedia, so it's not a secret. I'm not seeing other names. Okay. Um, and I never did write the book about him. His son used to, to contact me occasionally just to kind of pass messages and things, and, but uh, I haven't been in contact for quite a while. Here's the, the important thing. Now, he was in the bar with two brothers, two of his brothers, and a whole lot of other people that were Irish Republican paramilitary. Okay, these are guys who have been in the war. They have been in the shooting war. They have done their stretches in prison as a result. They have been thrown in prison for things they didn't do. They've been thrown in for things they did do, but they've been thrown in prison for things they didn't do. But these are guys that actually have been out there. Do you know how much they talked about it? None. None. We could be in a place all night long and you know all it was funny stories chatting about families things like that none of these people talked about in public in in, in a you know in, in a place that they had to worry about surveillance like youtube like the you know the digital world they didn't talk about it. The ones who talked about it, uh, if somebody started talking about it, they were removed. Now, I don't mean they were killed. What I mean, they were removed. <laughs> they were removed because it was felt that they were either an instigator, either they were an informant trying to get in and stir stuff up and see who they could get to talking, right? Or... Um, or they just, you know, weren't being smart about things. They were drawing attention to themselves. You know, it was a lot the same thing like what I've talked about with organized crime. And I'm going to put this on, on YouTube, which usually I don't put this stuff on YouTube. Um, but, but just because of the, the comment that was made in that, you know, about people ought to stand up and 500 Spartans and all this kind of stuff, I think more people, but this might help some people kind of understand. Uh, you know, in, in every, whether it's a resistance or whether it was the the, uh, the colonialists, whether it was the Continental Army, whether it was the Patriots, uh, the, you know, the, uh, our founding fathers, whatever it was, there always has to be a number of different, you know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a multiple front engagement. Let me just put it that way, you know. You have people who are out there talking the game up, right? Uh, you have people that may be handling stuff with the press and propaganda. You'll have people in politics, you know, who may be overtly involved, may be covertly involved, may be clandestinely involved. And if you don't know the difference between overt, covert, and clandestine, look it up. And, and if you don't know the difference, you might say, you know, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I should learn a little bit more before I, you know. Uh, and then there are, are fighters, the ones who are actually going out there and doing, you know, the, 
the field work, shall we say. Those do not, for the most part, the fighters are not the ones that you're hearing from. Because they can't be. They can't be. Because as soon as you start talking about things, you have very limited, well, for the most part, most of the ones who talk about it never do anything. Yeah, never do anything. And that's their strength, the talking. Okay. Um, you know, there are a couple of, of exceptions. Um, i trying to think of the guy that... Uh, what was his name? Uh, it doesn't, doesn't matter. I won't use his name. Uh, there have been people who went from the IRA on to political, a uh, very, very high political. Uh, well, I, I'll say uh, Martin McGinnis. You can look him up, too. Uh, but he, he graduated. You know, he, he wasn't involved in the politics when he was an IRA commander. Totally different thing. Um, and, and those were in the days before uh, electronic... Let's say our digital world was not as advanced as it is now. Okay, I tell you, when I was over there, uh, it, it was a rare day when there wasn't a helicopter over us all the time, somewhere. Yeah. It was where I first heard the word and learned the word securocrat. How the entire country under Britain had become not a bureaucracy but a securocracy. Everything he had to do, and we're living in it now. Anyway, we used to have a lot of people come to this channel and, and make those kind of statements. We got to do something. We got to do this. And, you know, if you don't, if you don't stand up, you don't have a hair on your, you know what. And I, and I would always cool them down. I said, knock it off, man. Knock it off. First off, if you were going to do anything, you would have done it, and I would have read about it in the paper. So you're, you know, you're just talking. So, so don't come on here because I'm going to think you're just trying to stir stuff up. And, and you are. Any talk like that gets you bounced. Okay, that's not what we're we're about on this channel. This is going to be. A, I do the political stuff, and I've made the conscious decision that the political stuff is going to be over on American Reversion, and and that's where we talk about trying to square away this country. And and here, I'm not going to deal with that anymore because we're going to talk about um, preparedness and survival on this. There's plenty, plenty to talk about in that regard. Uh, and, you know, some of it has to do, th this kind of borders on that, uh, because, I mean, hey, part of preparedness is keep it quiet, right? Keep it on the down low. So I've never understood, you know, preparedness that we're, you know, and you can say, well, you're doing a YouTube channel. Well, yeah, you can be surprised what you don't know, right? I'm doing a YouTube channel, giving some advice, some things that I know, but, nah, you know, I, I, don't, I don't say much about me, right? Anyway, the, the advice there is, the message, the advice there is, um, if you're going to do something, be quiet about it. Because if you're not, you're not going to be effective. Now, you're going to be effective drumming other people up. If that's the purpose, that's all right. But don't do it on my channel. Okay. Don't do it on my channel because that's not what this channel is for and if if you are you know uh, whatever so i'm not talking to anybody in particular or anybody specific uh what, what whatever your calling is in life i'm not here to tell you that you're wrong i'm just here to suggest because like i say i don't think many of you out there are freedom fighters so please Take it from a guy who has known them. Do it the smart way. These guys were smart and they still did half their lives in prison. You know, that doesn't serve anybody. It doesn't serve families well. Now, one thing, after a struggle of 800 years against British oppression and occupation, things have pretty much gotten got squared away. But you know how they got squared away? 
politics. I know, I know that some people are going to just hate to hear that. You're going to hate to hear that because it's not exciting, right? And you hate politicians. I know, so do I. But they're done through politics and wheeling and dealing and keeping on and, and, and getting the other side to stop doing some things that you don't like and start doing some things you like. That's what politics is. But it takes people being involved. Now, would they have been able to do it without the military arms? Probably not. So the, 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 the military arms were extremely important. But you see, the two did not cross. Oh, they worked together. But you did not hear the people who were out front. You, the people who were actually doing things, you never heard them make a peep in public. So like I say, be careful. Anybody out there also, I, I would say, if somebody's trying to get you to, uh, you know, say, we got to go do something and this and that and the other thing, be real careful. Somebody says something like that to me, and they don't get much more of my time because I figure they walk, fall into one of those two previous categories. And they're a danger to me. So whatever you do in life, do it. But, you know, for the, for the most part. Uh, people who really are effective and actually do things, people learn about it after it happens. They don't hear a lot about it before it. I almost said before it happens. I should say before it never happens. <laughs> okay. Hope you enjoyed the story. I have uh, many more lessons from the north of Ireland that sometimes I share over on Patreon. And uh, I'm going to finish my buffalo sweat. It's the start of a new week tomorrow, Monday. Hope you all are having a good day, a good evening. Hope that when you watch this tomorrow, you have a good day. Uh, remember, apply yourself to the things that are yours to apply yourself to. And uh, be smart in everything that you do. Be focused in everything that you do. Because preparedness is serious business. Okay? You all have a good night. Remember that we prepare well today in order to live well tomorrow, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.